Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Optimized E-Commerce Podcast. I'm your host, Tanner Larson. And today we have a special guest from the BGS team. Her name is Mariana Dorado. And I know I said her name wrong because I cannot roll the R the correct way or I, I, my tongue just doesn't work that way. So she's going to slap me next time she sees me because I continuously butcher her name, even though she coached me prior to us getting on this podcast. Um, but anyway, aside from the fact that I can't pronounce her last name, she is a very talented revenue optimization expert working with BGS. She's been with us for about two years now. And I just call her Mariana so I don't get in trouble. I don't ever try to say miss your last name or anything like that because clearly I'm not capable. But Today, what we're going to talk about with Mariana is kind of the, the function or, and purpose or goal, so to speak, of each page of your store. Now, most people look at their store kind of as a whole thing, like this is my store. Well, actually, you need to break it down into your individual pages. And we all know there are pages like your homepage, your category page, your uh, product page, your checkout page, obviously, and you got your cart and all that kind of stuff as well. Then you may have about us pages and other things like that. But they work very well together, obviously, to along the buyer's journey to get, convert the sale. But more importantly than that, every page has its own unique individual goal. The goal of the store is not to make the sale, okay? The goal of the store is to affect the buyer's journey. And the goal of each page of, of, the, of the store is what allows that buyer's journey to happen. So each page has a specific goal, which is not the sale, in order to advance the prospect or the visitor further along the process so that eventually you do get a sale. And a lot of people seem to mix that up. They kind of think that every page of their store is designed to sell or make the sale or whatever like that. And that's just not the case. And that's what Mariana is going to be going through today as we jump in. But before we do that, Mariana, thank you for jumping on. Sure. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, so, Mariana, why don't we start with, since it's your, your first episode with us, uh, why don't you start with a little bit of background, like who are you, how you came to be, what, working with BGS, what you do, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I've been uh, working at BGS for almost two years now. Uh, I was one of the interns uh, in the internship program. So, yeah, and I love doing audits and analyzing the websites and find, finding what typically works uh, better for most of the sites, right? So we can come up with the, the best solution possible. And yeah, that's basically it. Where do you live? I live in Brazil. That's yeah. why the R is different. <laughs> yep. So she's down in Brazil and definitely is one of our, you know, better ROs in terms of talent and knowledge. She's been with us for a long time. So she, she really knows her stuff, works on some of our amplified partnership stores. Also um, when we're onboarding a new amplified partner or uh, talking with new companies that want to work with us or whatever, she does a lot of the initial um, heuristic analysis stuff where we take a look at the site to figure out where we can add value, how we can help them and if we can help them. Cause you know, sometimes there's stores that aren't the right fit for us that we can't provide the value. So we obviously wouldn't work with them, but uh, in Mariana's job, she gets to really look at a lot of different sites um, and see how they work, basically, and what works and what doesn't across these different sites. So um, the goals, though, that of each page are fairly consistent across any site, any industry. And so we're going to go ahead and dive right into that. So Mariana, what, let's see. First question we were going to go through is, you know, why is it important to not add, add to carts, like to the homepage, to try to like skip ahead? Because we see people doing that all the time, right? We see people with a homepage and they've got buy now, add to cart, prices, discounts, sales on their homepage. Yeah, so uh, mainly because the main purpose of the homepage is to build trust and to provide clarity on the next steps. So uh, if, you, if you already add an add to cart button to your homepage, you're wasting the step where people would be convinced uh, where you could actually persuade your customers and convince them that your product is amazing, which is the product page, right? Where you can give them details uh, of why they should get that product from you. And it's very similar to a physical store behavior. When you enter a store, uh, you're browsing, right? You're just looking at, at the, the items and you probably don't want someone pushing you to take something. So uh, you don't want to scare your customers. And if you already 
have an ATC, they'll probably not be convinced. It can work uh, for specific stores in specific contexts, but uh, they're probably not be convinced enough to to add the item to the cart. So uh, they'll most likely be scared and run away. And yep. it's much easier to to close a window or a tab uh, than leaving the store, right? Because you're talking yep. to someone and they're just most likely give up. Yep. And as an example of that, guys, think about when you, um, if we've all done it, you go to a, a furniture store, you walk into the furniture store and you get mobbed by salespeople. Hey, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I, what can I show you? What can I do? And you're just like, I just, I haven't even walked in the, I don't even know what you have. I don't know if you can help me. Yeah. I want to look, or you go to a car lot and you get mobbed by the salesman before you've even stepped on the lot. That's kind of like adding your buy buttons or add to cart buttons to your homepage or where they don't make any sense. Same, same thing goes, I would assume for the category pages, right? Yeah, right. I mean, of course, uh, that's something you can test. Uh, mm -hmm. But the main purpose of the category page is to show the range of products you offer. Mm -hmm. And then people will be able to select from what you offer, uh, what makes sense for them. And then when, once they proceed to the to the product page, they'll have the details and make mm -hmm. sure that's what they're looking for or not. So yeah, the chances that you waste uh, the customer's journey is high. So that's why yeah. you should pay attention to that. Yeah, it, it just if you think about it, guys, think about the way you shop. Like when you go to an online store. Now the thing is, as store owners, we usually don't treat our store the same way we want to be treated when we shop on other stores. We have a different mindset on it or whatever. And it's kind of weird the way we do that. But if you think about the fact that when you go to an online store and you click on a category, like you say, uh, shoes, the shoes pop up, right. And you're browsing and you're looking for some nine inch stilettos or some crazy shoe. Right. And you're looking at all these crazy shoes. Are you ready on that category page to buy them? Do you like, if they just say add to cart, well, how do you buy a shoe without actually selecting your size first? Maybe they have wide, narrow, maybe they have different actual, you know, obviously the different sizes. And then you also have, um, what does it look like from the other angles? What's the, what's it made out of all these different questions that are not answered on the homepage or the category page or any of these other pages. So when you're adding a buy now or an add to cart button in these early steps of the process, you're putting the cart before the horse. The customer doesn't have the information, just like you wouldn't have the information if you were shopping for shoes. They can't make the decision. So what you do is you just basically turn them off. And whereas the button should say, learn more or see item or you know something along those eyes, lines. And so that's where Mariana is going with, you're basically putting the cart before the horse and killing your chances at a sale. Yeah, exactly. So, we, we, that's, a, that's one of the big ones we talk about, but like one of the other things I want to get into with you is when it comes to, we, we obviously we're an optimization company, so we optimize the entire store, but there's a process for that. So what pages should be optimized first in what order and why? So uh, when it comes to revenue optimization, we work backwards. So uh, first we optimize the checkout, then card, product pages, category pages, and then the homepage. And the reason for that is because once people have already reached to the checkout page, it's much easier to convert, right? So they have already been through the funnel. So working on the, the improvements is much easier. It makes, makes more sense because you know people are willing to, to convert. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do the, the opposite process, yeah. the process backward. And the other side of that, guys, is the fact that if when we're optimizing the store, we're obviously optimizing a store for max revenue and performance and everything else. If you have a store where you just start working on it, like your store and the first optimization you make is on the front, instead of going back to front, like Mariana said, and you optimize something on the homepage first. Okay. But you have all these other broken areas behind that. It negates the power of that optimization. You won't see the results from it unless it's just a click. You know, if you're just trying to get a click to the next page, you might see it, but you don't get the benefit of that optimization carrying through your entire sales funnel. If you start from the back and work your way out, every optimization that you make after that first one builds on the one behind it and you get a more um, synergistic effect of your optimizations. And it's also easier to, to truly track what's happening. Um, so now you, is that to say you can't just optimize a specific point? No, but we're talking from a, if you're starting from scratch, you're optimizing the entire thing, you're gonna to wanna to start from the back, work your way forwards. Um, 
Otherwise, you're kind of going to miss out on some of the, the power of what you're doing. And you may actually make an optimization that would be a winning optimization if it wasn't broken somewhere else down the buyer's journey. Correct. So how about some tips? Let's just cover a bunch of tips and stuff that'll help people, right? So some other tips for their store um, that can help them, you know, optimize these, these specific pages. And we can be pretty specific here. Uh, yeah, the, the most general things I would say are clarity and consistency. So people should never try to guess what's going on on your, on your uh, website. You should always provide a clear navigational path, which means uh, if you have, let's say, CTA buttons on the homepage and you just say get item, this is very wide. So uh, if it takes you to the collection page, it should say uh, see collections, go to collections, something like that. So and also every page should be should look like part of your website. They shouldn't look like random pages. And so that's why I would say clarity and consistency are the two most important things uh, when you, we talk about the general website. Mm -hmm. Now people get really, uh, obviously we know because we see people all the time in our, our programs and stuff, the, the page they care about the most is the product page, right? That they, they pretend like the rest of the site doesn't matter because the product page is all that happens, but that's not really the case. But um, First, two things. One, why don't you tell them why the product page is not the only page that's matter, like how the buyer's journey actually happens for people. Um, go ahead and start there. Then I have a follow-up question for you. Okay. Um, let's start from the homepage, right? And then, then we can cover uh, each step and, and what um, we can do on each one. Uh, okay. So on the homepage, as we mentioned, uh, the main goals are to build trust and to provide clarity on the, the next step. So customers should land on your website and know exactly what to sell. Uh, so what we typically recommend is putting three to four bullet points with your unique features. Why are you awesome? Why is your product awesome? And then uh, people can easily understand uh, what you're selling. And also to add an image that um, shows what you're selling. And that's something uh, really important because one of our clients, when he first started, uh, I ran the first user test and people were extremely confused uh, with the images. Uh, he actually sells masks and users were like, is that uh, underwear? Is he selling clothes? And they were completely confused. But the interesting thing is that the features, the mask features were there. So if they read it, they would be able to, to understand, but they, they don't read it. Most of the people don't read it and they know that. So that's why it's important to match. And once we updated the main banner image, this never happened again. So also on one of the last gym, gym sessions, uh, one of the stores was selling clothes to kids and uh, their best selling products were like four to five uh, year old items, but they were promoting the newborn items. So you got to figure out if it makes sense, what you're promoting, what you're highlighting. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have a strategy for that, that's okay, but you got to pay attention to, to everything. Absolutely. And as we mentioned, uh, the CTA buttons need to be clear so people don't have to try to guess uh, what's going to happen once they click it. And the navigation should also be, be clear. They should understand uh, what are the pages, what are the collections. And uh, when it comes to search, um, visitors who use the search typically convert like many times more, maybe four to five times more. I've seen that several times. So it's very important to have it prominent and optimized as well. And then uh, when we talk about the collection pages, uh, the main goal is to show uh, which products you sell. So then customers can, can choose from, from the available options what, what products they want to see in detail, right? So filters and sort options are the most important things on these pages. And you got to make sure you have relevant filters. So I was analyzing uh, a website, I guess, for a store audit a while ago. And they were selling T-shirts, but the only filters they provided were collections. And I didn't know their brand. Uh, their collection seems to totally random thing to me. 
because I was not uh, familiar mm -hmm. with it. So I couldn't filter by color, by size, uh, by pattern, uh, by price. So it was super confusing. You got to find uh, what is relevant to your audience and then add these kind of filters. Yep. And also the ability to, to sort. So typically uh, from high to low price and from low to high and from date are the most used ones. Mm -hmm. And also you got to pay attention to your images because this when people see your your images in the category pages they will choose if they proceed to the next page or not so we gotta use high quality images and make sure they are consistent as well so if we use the t-shirt uh example uh if the main image the first one is an item with a white background and then the second one is a lifestyle image and then the third one is like a colored background it's totally confusing and really hurts your credibility. So having uh, consistent images and high quality ones are very important as well. And then uh, when we talk about the product page, uh, this is the step where your customers will decide if what you're offering fits what they're looking for or not. So uh, you got to pay attention to the copy, right? To the descriptions, uh, to the images as well, and to the reviews. So uh, I got to make sure you, you don't have walls of text so it's not tiring to read your, your mm -hmm. product descriptions, especially on mobile, right? Because yeah. uh, people are not going to stop and read a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, what I would say is uh, having paragraphs or of four to five uh, lines maximum. And then the images obviously showing different angles, whatever is relevant to your audience, uh, people wearing it. If you find out they, that's what they want to see, you, you should edit. And also the reviews layout, you should always provide it. And visitors should be able to sort, to filter and to search through the, the reviews because mm -hmm. this is a huge uh, trust factor, right? And much more important than not having bad reviews, because I know some people get uh, worried about it. If, oh, someone complained about my product, is that going to hurt me? But much more important than that is how you deal with the bad evaluations and customers uh, pay attention to that. So if you uh, exclude all of your bad reviews to only have five-star products, this will probably look scammy and then customers won't, won't believe your good evaluation, right? So this is very important as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And another important thing is the add to cart. Uh, we've tested by now several times against the add to cart, but by now uh, it's very confusing. So I don't know if it, this will take me to the checkout or to the cart page. So you got to say add to cart and make sure it's prominent and that there are no bugs when people click it. And you said you wanted to talk about something on the product page, right? Yeah, I wanted to, one of the big mistakes, you actually just touched on it. There was two things, the product page, but like people are always asking us like, uh, you know, I have um, my, my add to cart button. And sometimes I have a buy now button as well, or I all, or, I want to put my PayPal button right there on my add to cart page or on my product page. And I wanted you to kind of touch on that as to why we think, and we, from our testing, it shows that's not a good idea. Yeah. So uh, the thing is you don't want to add a lot of elements to your pages, like extra elements. So having like PayPal buttons, for example, is something we don't recommend, not even in the cart. Uh, we recommend having the images instead because customers will know that once they go to the checkout, uh, it will be there. But it can be really distracting and cause like extra cognitive load. So yeah, I, I wouldn't add, not even the, the icons at this step, unless it's a very important trust factor or if it's really very important to your audience. And, and there's that just the issue of hierarchy of focus as well, right? They don't know yes. what what to click on, so they don't click on anything. Yeah, and that's the main the main uh, issue with having both buy now and add to cart because.
because I mean, what's the difference between them? That's not clear to everyone. So yeah, that's why you should stick yep. with uh, Edge of Heart. Yep. And then from a marketing standpoint, guys, if you have, uh, we see it a lot. People add that PayPal button straight to their product page. And yes, it does work. If you put a PayPal button there, people who like to pay with PayPal, if they're going to add to cart, will most likely click that PayPal button and, and go on, right? That doesn't actually mean they purchase. So what people see is, well, people click it. So it must be working. The problem that you're creating for your business there from a longevity standpoint and an effective marketing standpoint is once they click that PayPal button, this is the same reason we don't have it in the cart, by the way, it takes them off of your store to PayPal. So from there, if they abandon the purchase, you're done. You have no chance of uh, cart retargeting, email of cart abandonment or anything. You need them to stay on your site until they go through all the different steps so that you collect the data, get the cookies placed, all that stuff so that you can do dynamic cart retargeting if they abandon cart. You can do a uh, cart abandonment email, SMS, you know, Facebook Messenger follow-up, whatever you're using to trigger that. But if they, if they leave your site because they click on a PayPal button in the cart or on the product page, you've lost that opportunity. And cart abandonment is a massive, massive win for our stores, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and then uh, when we go to the to the cart page, mm -hmm. the main goal is uh, to make customers proceed, proceed to check out easily, right? So, uh, for example, the, the Ajax cart, the main goal is to show that the item was added to the cart. Uh, and then the proceed to checkout button, uh, it needs to be a button, uh, has to be prominent. And then you can provide a continue shopping link. And why a link and not a button? Because uh, it makes more sense to, to incentivize people to complete the purchase then take them back like a few steps and maybe lose them. So, I mean, for people who want to, to keep shopping, the link is there, but it's not as prominent as yep. the, the proceed checkout button. So uh, there shouldn't be any distractions on the card. That's why we recommend removing the navigation as well mm -hmm. and being very careful with pop-ups and extra fields. Of course, that's something that has to be tested if uh, it can work on specific stores, but it can also be extremely distracting and people can get annoyed uh, with pop-ups and upsells. That's why you got to be extra careful about it. And for example, uh, a special instructions field, uh, the majority of your uh, visitors won't have a special instruction to add. And that's something you can add to the thank you page or to a confirmation email. So there's no reason to be uh, on the cart page because the main goal is to make them proceed to check out without any friction points. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when we talk about the checkout page, uh, the obvious goal is to complete the purchase easily. So uh, the steps should be clear and simple, as concise as possible. And you should only ask for information, information you actually need. So for example, why would you ask them for their birthday if they're not using it? The same thing for the phone number. If there's no purpose uh, to ask for that, just don't. Uh, to make the steps easier and, and well, better to, to fill in. Uh, also, the breadcrumbs are very important to show uh, where customers are at. So what we use is the cart and then customer information, uh, then shipping and then the payment, but also a very clean and concise layout. And then what do we do with third-party payments like uh, PayPal, PayPal or, you know, shop pay or whatever? What do we do with those? On yeah. The, then on the, you, you, you should add it to the payment step. You can have like many options like Afterpay, PayPal, but then when they are already in the payment uh, step. So we suppress it from the actual customer information page and have it only yes. show up when they actually get to the credit card field section. Yeah, which means, yeah, they have already gone through the customer information to the shipping. And also it's very important to, to call shipping times out. So the customer shouldn't have to guess when they're getting their products. So always mm -hmm. put in how many days you, you'll be uh, sending their, their items and or how many days they'll be receiving it. 
Awesome. So uh, the other thing that we want to kind of talk about that we see stores do a lot um, is they provide either, well, there's a couple of things, they either provide no information or the opposite end of that is providing a ton of information on every page or specifically the product page and whatnot. What's kind of the, is that a good idea that provides so much information or is there a kind of a sweet spot for how that should work? Uh, no, providing a lot of information is not at all the best option. Uh, I mean, you should provide enough information and enough information will be extremely contextual. So let's say I sell paper clips. Uh, how long can I talk about paper clips without making the pro process exhausting? Mm -hmm. So probably not much, right? It's totally different from uh, selling cameras that I need to, to explain the specifications and to give much more details of how it works and, and the features and everything. So uh, the secret is to find the, the sweet spot, which is enough information for your specific audience, but not uh, just throw a lot of information to them because again, they can get scared or bored and just close the window and you've lost it you've lost yep. the purchase. Now, in, in some cases though, there's lots of, you know, like, like you're saying, selling cameras, there's about the model, there's the specifications, there's the technical stuff. Then, the, then there's the other things that people want to know about like shipping and returns and all of that. So on that can turn into a rather lot of information. So what's the best way for them to not overwhelm their customer, but still present everything that needs to be presented? Uh, okay, so for example, uh, the most extensive information about shipping and returns, you can have a separate uh, page for that. And then uh, keeping a shipping and returns tab in the product uh, next to the product description. And also using see more, the see more link functionality is a good call because then you can have a lot of text without making it visually tiring. So uh, on really long pages, let's say product pages, uh, using a table of contents is a good call. So you can have like different uh, sections in the table of contents and people, uh, when they scroll uh, through the page, they can choose which sec section they want to see. So they will go to more specific, um, specific sections, specific information. And of course, you can always have a FAQs page. Ideally, your website shouldn't need FAQs uh, because everything will be so well explained that you wouldn't need them, but uh, you can keep a separate page for that uh, just in case. Yep. Now, um, the, the see more tab or the table of contents can also be combined into a progressive, displo dis progressive disclosure piece, which is where you would have like, you may have, let's say three or five pages worth of, of documentation that you need to share, but it's all hidden behind uh, little uh, clickable buttons that are titled like product description, product mm -hmm. specifications, technical details, shipping and returns, and they don't expand until the customer actually clicks on them. So if it's so not like me, if I don't care about the shipping returns and I just want to know the technical stuff, I open that, it's right there. Cool. I can buy Mariana comes along and she's like, well, I want to know what, what my return policy is before I even look at anything else because I've been burned in the past. She can open that and then go jump around wherever she wants to. But it's not all in your face where you have to wade through it to find the information that you need. Um, and it's really all about, as Mariana said earlier, it's clarity, but it's it's making it a, a pleasant and subconscious shopping experience. We don't want the shopping experience to be in the conscious part of the brain. We want it to be in the subconscious part of the brain. Shopping, buying, all of that happens best in the subconscious. It's the most lowest barrier, lowest trust barrier. Everything is just easier to, to have happen. The more they have to think, the more they have to consider and go, where is this? What do I do? How does this work? What is that? Is this right? All that. You're getting them trapped in their own head and they, the purchase, the rate of completion of purchase is going to start dropping dramatically every time they have to think it's going to lower. So everything Mariana is talking about is helping to make that completely subconscious because we know how to shop online. Most people are very used to it. Some people aren't as used to it, but if you have it very consistent where it's very clean and easy to use and just instinctive, the sales process happens and that's what increases conversions. Um, in a lot of cases, right, Mariana, we wind up, the, people think we have to add a bunch of stuff, but really what we wind mm -hmm. up doing is taking a lot of stuff away. 
Yeah, and keeping the the relevant elements. Yeah, of course. I mean, the the main goal is to to let them go to the to the checkout, and it feels like a pleasant process, right? Without any headaches, without any any bugs, or uh, where they're not struggling to to complete their purchase. Because I mean, unless they really really want your product, uh, they're not gonna gonna stay if it's a hard process, and you yep. can't count on that. Totally. Well, guys, we covered a lot today. This is really good stuff. Thank you very much, Mariana. What you guys need to do right now is subscribe to the Optimized E-Commerce Podcast, whether that's on iTunes, if you're watching the video version, or if you're on you know, iTunes or Stitcher or whatever, subscribe there. If you need links to the podcast or want the show notes or anything like that, go to buildgrowscale.com forward slash podcast. Everything is there. Every episode is there. Full show notes, the video podcast, links to all the different places you can listen Everything is there that you need at buildgrowscale.com forward slash podcast. And also guys, if you enjoyed the episode, if you like the podcast, leave us a review, let us know what you thought. Also give us ideas for future episodes and maybe we can bring you on or record some content that actually helps you in a specific question that you have, right? So with that guys, thank you. And we will see you on the next episode.